The most costly mistake people make with AWS Lambda is not thinking about the cost of services you use with your Lambda functions. Sure, when misconfigured, a Lambda function on its own can be costly if it is invoked a lot or it has to run for a long time every time it's invoked. But luckily, we can use the Lambda Power Tuning State Machine by Alex Casaboni to right-size our Lambda memory allocation, which will really help cut our Lambda cost down by getting rid of the waste. But Lambda cost is usually just a small part of the AWS bill for a serverless application. You've probably seen blog posts like this that complains about how serverless is so expensive, and pretty much in every single case, it boils down to the author picking the wrong AWS service to use, which AWS really hasn't done good enough a job to educate its customers on how to pick between similar services. In this particular case, the author used API Gateway where ALB would have been better given the throughput of his application. And it's worth noting that API Gateway is a relatively expensive service compared to Lambda, where you are paying for the number of API requests at a rate of $3.5 per million. And if you enable caching, then there's additional charge for the cache node as well. But luckily for me, I prefer to do most of my caching at the CloudFront level. So this is usually not something I have to worry about. And if you want to learn more about where and how to apply caching in your serverless application, then check out my other video. The link is in the description below. The good news is that there is API Gateway HTTP APIs, which is kind of the version 2 of API Gateway, which is significantly cheaper compared to API Gateway REST APIs by a huge 70%. Unfortunately, even four years after its launch, HTTP APIs are still missing a lot of the features from REST APIs, which makes it a non-starter for most people. And nowadays, you also have the option of Lambda function URLs, which is the most cost-efficient way to build APIs with Lambda, but it does come with some drawbacks as well. If you want to learn more about function URLs, including when to use them, then check out my other video. The link is in the description below. Compared to API Gateway, Step Functions is even more expensive, potentially by some margin. With Step Functions standard workflows, you pay by the number of state transitions at the rate of $25 per million, which is why I usually reserve the use of step functions for business critical workflows like payment processing, where the extra resilience and audit trail that step functions gives me justifies its cost. Because if I have to build those features myself, the engineering time will be even more expensive. And to be fair to step functions, it does have express workflows as well, which is far cheaper and is priced by request count, duration, and the memory use. And its pricing is very similar to Lambda, but it's worth noting that Express Workflows is designed for a very different use case to standard workflows. And while it's cheaper and more scalable, it doesn't support callback patterns and can only run for five minutes compared to standard workflows ability to run for a whole year. So depending on whether you use standard or Express Workflows, the cost for step functions can differ greatly. If you want to learn more about step functions, like when and how to use them, as well as the difference between standard and the express workflows, then check out my free course on step functions. The link is in the description below. And then there are your event topics and queues and buses, most of which are reasonable cost-wise, but you still need to do the due diligence and work out how much they will likely cost you based on your traffic so you don't get a nasty surprise at the end of the month. You also need to consider other services that your workload depends on, such as Secrets Manager and the KMS for storing and the encrypting secrets. Secrets Manager, for example, charges 40 cents per secret per month on top of the usage-based pricing. So this cost can stack up quickly when you have thousands of secrets spread across different regions and accounts. And then there's CloudWatch, which is oftentimes one of the biggest line items in my AWS bill. CloudWatch charges you for several things. For logs, it charges for the amount of data it ingests from your functions and for their retention as well. It's common for people to spend a lot more on CloudWatch logs than they do on Lambda, sometimes by an order of magnitude. And then there are the custom metrics. And you should have them, probably a lot of them, to help you monitor your system and to be alerted as soon as possible when something goes wrong. 
But the thing to keep in mind is how you organize their dimensions because CloudWatch considers every unique combination of dimensions as a separate metric. In the example here, you will pay for four metrics instead of one. In the extreme case, I've heard of a company that spent tens of thousands of dollars a month on CloudWatch metrics because they used the request ID as a dimension. So every user request created a new metric and cost them 30 cents. Don't make that same mistake. And finally, you also pay for alarms as well, which again, you likely need a lot of them to help you monitor your application in production. And if your function runs inside a VPC, then also watch out for the cost of VPCs and especially the cost of NAT gateway if you need to send a large amount of data out to the internet. Because NAT gateway charges you for the amount of data processed as well as by the hour. And unless you use VPC endpoints, even communication to other AWS services such as DynamoDB or S3 will be going through the NAT gateway. Again, I've heard of companies that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on NAT gateway alone. When used at scale, NAT gateway can be a bottomless pit and you may be better off switching to NAT instances instead in those cases. And since we just mentioned the VPC endpoints, they also have an uptime cost as well as data transfer cost. Individually, they're much cheaper than NAT gateway but you need one VPC endpoint for every AWS service you use. So the cost of VPC endpoints can also stack up quickly. And my advice is to not put your Lambda function inside the VPC unless you absolutely have to. So those are some of the peripheral services that you should watch out for in terms of costs for your serverless application. But then you also have the very complex data transfer cost. This chart by Corey Quinn is probably your best bet for understanding how data transfer costs work. And when you do, you can pat yourself on the back and pronounce yourself a cloud economist. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development.